Welcome back to the channel again, guys. Today's video is going to be on a trigger job on the Taurus G2 Millennium. Um, I want to remind you that any modifications that you do to your firearm is your responsibility, and I will not be held accountable for anything that you do. Also know that anything that you do to your firearm, um, as far as taking the, the, the gun down more than what the the manufacturer recommends you could possibly void your warranty um, so I want you to enjoy the video and as a disclaimer this is the reason why um, I don't show you everything as far as taking the gun completely down I leave a little bit to the imagination um, so enjoy the video Welcome back guys and thanks for stopping in today. What we are going to attempt is a trigger job on the Millennium G2 Taurus. Um, as you can see, the firearm is clear. Uh, now, the Taurus has a decent trigger, but it's not perfect. Um, major reason for doing this is, I'm gonna show you here, see if I can get it to mimic it. Okay, for whatever reason, do it there okay you hear that little click um, now it's not affecting the gun in no way shape or form it's got over 300 rounds through it and even there you can see it's okay it's not affecting the gun uh, as far as uh, functioning but um it is a concern so I'm gonna help them by polishing the components uh, we can elim eliminate that so we're gonna work on the slide first we're gonna remove the barrel and recoil spring because we don't need that now usually in a trigger job we usually remove the uh, firing pin plunger and striker and we work on those and polishing the, the faces of those but Taurus made this to where you cannot even pull the extractor out it's a one-way pin as you can see the pin goes through here it's what holds your extractor in there's no hole up here for the pin to drift all the way through uh, so therefore we cannot even remove that uh, firing pin plunger so but we can remove the striker so I'm gonna go ahead and do that off film here and uh, we'll show you how that's done so hang on real quick all right, so first thing we need to do is uh, we need to remove this striker. And in order to do that, um, it's really simple. It takes down just like a Glock. This uh, front face here, uh, you need to push the press this at the same time, slide your uh, back plate off. Okay, that removes. Pull that out. Okay, and then uh, just like a Glock, uh, you put it back in here. Get your focus. Focus here for you. We're going to press the the spring, and we're going to pull these two little cups off, the retaining cups. Okay. And remove the spring. And actually, this striker is more like the uh, the MMPs, um, as far as the uh, it has an extra little spring in here. So. Put the components off to the side here and we're not going to be using um, what we're going to work on first is the striker face here okay and I mean it's this whole thing's pretty polished but if you run your finger across here you can feel the the mill marks okay so all I'm going to do is just remove that with a flat file and some sandpaper and bring that to a sheen and yeah you can actually see some of the lines in there uh, also, I'm going to be polishing this whole this whole thing, removing any of these little sharp edges. And then a lot of where you're getting some of the gritty fill, there's a hole on the top of this. Well, when you activate your key uh, for the lock, it actually puts like a transfer bar down in front of here so that the striker cannot be uh, cocked past this. Okay, well, you're, I'm getting a lot of grit going through here, so I think... On the inside here, it might have to remove some of the burrs on that rough edge of that plastic mold. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and do that off film and uh, we'll be right back all right so we got that all done there uh, basically what I did was I just polished the uh, well, flat flat sanded the the face of the striker there till the um, all the machine marks went away uh, not changing any angles or anything just flat sanding that and then brought it to a shine uh, like I said about the firing pin block safety there's no way to remove it since there's no complete hole for that pin so what I did was I just uh, I polished it the best that I could with it in there and then I went ahead and uh, uh, sanded and polished the underside I would have liked to have got to the breech face but there again considering I can't pull the extractor out there's no way for me to get in there and polish the breech face so uh, basically about all we can do with this so we're just going to go ahead and get this assembled Okay, can't really tell the difference right now, but with that face being done, should really help. Um, also, why I had this um, all off and went ahead and, like I said, I polished the uh, the bottom there. Went ahead and uh, brought the feed ramp up, feed ramp up to a higher shine, and also polishing the uh, the spot here on the uh, the breech face there, because that's what actually. Uh, rubs your breech face when coming into a lockup. So the smoother that is, uh, should help prevent any um, out of battery um, malfunctions. Okay, now with that out of the way, we are going to go ahead and bring in our frame. This I will be doing off film. I've never had this frame off before. And I really don't need a camera in front of me when I'm trying to do this and if something goes flying I don't see where it came from uh, the pins will drift from this side um, out and the only reason why I'm knowing that is because when I bought this it had some uh, some little burrs over here where I can tell that they actually pushed them this way so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this all off and uh, once I get it all apart um, we'll come back and uh, I'll show you how it was done but I need to do it off film first um, so hang on real quick all right so we got the frame disassembled uh, as you can see um, it was a little difficult but not as difficult as it looks when you when you look into there uh, you drift out your three pins here um, you will have to pull your your takedown lever here um, You'll have to pull it through before you can pull the locking block and everything out. Uh, so you have to pull that through. Be careful because there is a detent and spring here. So you have to like get something in there, push it down, and then at the same time push um, the takedown lever out. Also uh, finagling um, your trigger bar out of the sear assembly. And then this here is just, uh, it's just in there when you slide it in it all fits together this is your uh, your reset on your trigger bar it pushes down and resets it um, I am going to polish all the the locking block I'm going to go ahead and polish the uh, the slide rails and everything but in order to get the trigger bar out I have to now push this pin out and I'm only going to push it so far because I don't need the uh, slide lock lever to come out so I'm going to push it this way uh, once I get it so far enough just enough to drop this trigger out and uh, I'm going to polish everything up and I'll bring you back once they're all polished and everything and show you the areas that I mainly focused on one thing to be careful with is that here is a little ball bearing um, it is actually part of your safety detent so when you're clicking your safety on up, up and on it's actually what lives in there um, to give you that good positive click so just be careful with that so um keep it in a safe spot so you don't lose it uh, now I'm going to focus on pulling that trigger out 
uh, polishing everything up, any rough edges. I mean, it's pretty common sense. I mean, you, there's rough edges, you remove them, you know, you just deburn and polish them. So let me get that. I'll come back and I'll show you the areas that I strictly focused on. And uh, we'll get the gun put together and we'll see how uh, good the trigger is. And hopefully that little um, reset issue that I was showing you earlier is gone. So hang on. Okay, so I basically got what uh, I planned on doing. Um, frame, I'm still gonna wash this all out, degrease that really well. Um, and since I polished all this stuff, I, I degreased everything, so I'm gonna reapply some frog lube to it. Um, so your your trigger bar, um, bring you in here, show you. Okay, so trigger bar, we polished this area up here. This is what comes in contact with your firing pin plunger. Uh, safety so we polish that just like you do on a Glock um, also polish in the top part here the back side here and you know it's not completely perfect but it's going to really help polish in here also polish in the, the the facing here on the trigger bar this is what actuates your double action so I didn't pay too great of attention on this because well you very seldom will be firing it in double action that's only if you know the round don't go off the first time let's face it who cares how good or bad our trigger is if you have to restrike the primer um, going around basically deburring this is just a stamped piece uh, deburring the whole thing uh, any rough edges just smoothing them out it's pretty simple stuff um, here is your uh, I believe this is probably called your disconnector um, polishing the top of this polishing the bottom of this where it comes in contact um, It'll actually come in contact like so. Uh, so making sure those two surfaces are smooth together. Um, and then basically that was that's basically it for the trigger. But since I had this all apart, I went ahead. The bottom feed ramp here. The locking block here. The slide rails as well. And then um, same thing here on the, uh, on the sear. Um, polish the slide rails here. I could have pulled this out and polished the front of that, um, but I didn't really see a purpose in it because, um, I mean, I don't really see anything wrong wrong with it. I don't see any burrs or anything like that on there. So what I'm going to do is put a light coat of frog lube on this, and I'm actually going to pack some grease um, in this sear down in here um, just, to, uh, just to make it, things a little bit more smoother. So... Now on to reassemble and um, I'll bring it back uh, when I get this all put back together and we'll we'll see how big of a difference this made. Um, so hang on real quick. Let me get this together. All right, so we're back. Uh, got everything assembled here as you can see. Bring you in close here. Got the whole internals polished. Uh, there's some copper grease down there in the uh, the sear and the connecting areas, um, which is what I recommend. Uh, same stuff Glock uses. It's the um, anti-cease uh, copper grease. So um, you know that that copper in there is going to uh, on your metal on metal. It's going to uh, rub those areas and polish them themselves. So um, at this point, if I wanted, which I'm probably not going to, I could take a little bit of that and put on the actual sear face here where it comes in contact with the striker but I'm not going to worry about it too much so um, and while I was in there even like on the slide I deburred a lot of the rough edges and stuff from the factory so this thing should be pretty smooth now on top of I uh, reapplied the frog glue to all the uh, the frame uh, pieces uh, still doing that thing Uh, not as bad. So let's see how the trigger feels. A lot better. See how double action 
Well, the double action is a lot better, but that's not really as important. So there you have it. Um, that is how you uh, do a trigger job on one of these and also uh, kind of a tune job. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please like, uh, subscribe, and share the video if you found it interesting. And also you can go into uh, my playlist on my channel and I have a, a review video on this one on top of a bunch of other cool videos. So uh, once again, guys, um, I want to encourage you to be performance driven in life and accept nothing but greatness. Thanks for watching.